Does the world need a legend? Or someone less reluctant to get it done? That is the beguiling request that embeds the for the most part unsurprising comic book film, conveyed a portion of a month earlier, Black Adam, with an extent of something. Black Adam was a great movie but left us with a lot of questions. Haven't seen the movie yet but you wanna know the plot? Then sit back and watch the video till the end as we'll tell you the whole Black Adam movie within 5 minutes. Hello everyone and welcome to Trendy Movies. Hit that sub button to get notified about all the latest and most authentic news about the trending films and series. Let's start with today's video. This being a history of the Black Adam, an almost 5,000 year old previously oppressed individual with powers past those of any human. The film sets the stage with a confounded and bloated introduction. Opening in the made up place that is known as Kondak, someplace in the center east, based on landscape and other social signs in the year 2600 BC. The film acquaints us with a man, then known as Teth Adam, who has been given superpowers, strength, speed, flight, the capacity to channel lightning-like power and endure shots, by a lot of wizards tackling the energy of a nearby mineral called Eternium. It resembles vibranium in marble, enacted by expressing Shazam a mantra that turns on and off Adam's powers like a switch, a hero ascends to overcome the malevolent ruler of Kanda, and afterwards goes immediately back to rest. Quick forward to pretty much the current day, or maybe the not-so-distant future, one in which the occupants of a modernized Kanda have been mistreated for a long time by a secrecy of fierce settler-hired fighters known as the Intergang an underground gathering of Kondaki hardliners, driven by a previous scholastic named Adriana, is looking for a long-covered artifact, yet the Intergang is as well. In the quarreling system, they stir Adam. Regardless of having been snoozing for five centuries, he is disturbed and continues to butcher a wreck of Intergang thugs in sluggish movement, in an early embellishments set-piece arranged to the drifters. Before sufficiently long, Adam rapidly gets familiar with everything of being superhuman, because of Adriana's comics fixated high school child, Boni Sabangwi, who even gives Adam an expression he's told to complete not long before he kills his casualties. Tell them the man in black sent you. Mockery is something Adam gets from Dr. Fate, Pierce Brosnan, a wry wizard and unfortunate man's Dr. Strange, who is an individual from something many refer to as the Justice Society, made out of superheroes, Hawkman, Cyclone, and Adam Smasher. They are displayed as the hero and Adam as the miscreant. Indeed, they say they've been called the Kondak to safeguard worldwide strength. In attempting to get Adam to work with them, they show him cooperation. To which Adam answers, in a voice dribbling with disparagement, that he works alone. Listen to this. Adam isn't the film's hero, in spite of his name being on the marquee. He shoots lightning bolts out of his fingers first. However, in this film, with regards to a country mistreated by a possessing armed force, with designated spots, and different misfortunes of opportunity, it considers recommending that somebody who skirts the limits of profound quality might be only the individual contact needs. Depend on it. Black Adam continues with unsurprising activity groupings, tedious battle scenes, and the now essential penance of a significant person. Yet it's that flavoring of revolutionary governmental issues, the subject, communicated in the film as whether or not political dissidents ought to need to carry on reasonably of war, that provides it with a touch of zest. Whether that is sufficient to set Black Adam, separated in a world that as of now seemingly has such a large number of superhero motion pictures, is muddled. Eventually, Adam kills Dr. Fate. I know he's godlike, however who can say for sure what will occur next with Dr. Fate? Moving towards the post credit scene, above all, Spoiler advance notice. Oak. So the film wraps up with Black Adam coming to an understanding of sorts with the Justice Society and Adriana that he will stay in Chandak not as its ruler, but rather as its defender. Be that as it may, the mid credit scene shows there's another person who needs to have something to do with the matter. In the stinger scene, we see a robot fly up to Black Adam in Kondak and project a 3D image of Amanda Waller, head of Task Force X, otherwise known as the Suicide Squad. Waller must watch godlike dangers, and prior in the film, she's the person who counseled Hawkman on Black Adam's enlivening in the present, and obviously it was her secret godlike jail where Black Adam was secured subsequent to giving up. Indeed people, 
Henry Karp Superman makes an appearance and says he really wants to converse with Black Adam. Presently, we need to hang tight for a Superman vs. Black Adam. Let's see what's gonna happen in the upcoming DC films, Special Shazam Fury of Gods. It may include Black Adam, as in the trailer, one of the seats for the Family of Gods was left empty and nobody knew who it was. My guess is that it's gonna be none other than Black Adam. There are a ton of negative reviews on the movie. But I think that DC did well comparatively, as they've been facing a lot of issues since the last year. What do you think about the movie? Comment down below and let us hear your thoughts. If you love Marvel, DC, and superhero movies and franchises, make sure to like this video and hit the sub button, as we'll upload a lot of content regarding this. I'll see you guys in the next video.